In this video, I'm going to show you how you can finally avoid nightmare clients. I'm going to give you three red flags to look for. If you know what to look for, then you can finally say no thank you to these horrible clients. Let's get right into it. But first, what's up, what's up? Mike Mack here, founder of automatedcleaningbusiness.com. I'm back with another video and we're talking about nightmare clients. So for anyone brand new and has never had the experience of having a nightmare client, let me tell you something right now. You're gonna wanna watch this because nightmare clients have a way of just making you so miserable, almost miserable to the point of wanting to close your business down just for one of them. Imagine if you land three of them. Now, if you're thinking about growth and just landing all types of clients and you know, you're just, you're not really too worried about it right now, trust me, this is something that will bite you in the behind. So you're not gonna wanna skip this video. All right, so without further ado, let's get into red flag number one. Okay, red flag number one that you are working with a nightmare client is disrespect. Okay, I know this one may seem obvious, and I know there's a lot of you out there like, yeah, Mike, duh, if someone's disrespectful, I would never take them on as a client. And good for you, that is exactly the mindset you're supposed to have. But the problem is, is that they're not always gonna be that disrespectful in the beginning. A lot of times it's very subtle in the beginning until they start working with you. And just imagine for a second, you have a client, you're feeling good about this client, you've trained your cleaners up, they're already taking care of the space, you're feeling good, now you're turning your attention to more business growth, more accounts, like I said, you're feeling really good because you're already assuming this is a client that's going to be with us for years and years to come. But the problem with that is a lot of times what ends up happening is your client starts irritating your cleaners. And then let's say your cleaners aren't huge on communication because maybe they're just assuming you're gonna take the client's side. They may not even tell you. So while this client is disrespecting your company, basically your cleaner, it could be one of those common situations where a cleaner quits and then you put another cleaner there and then they quit and then you put another cleaner there and then they quit and you this whole time thinking oh it's so hard to staff this one account but in all actuality it's not that it's difficult to staff this particular office it's that this office is ran by a nightmare client which is making it impossible you see a lot of times people assume a nightmare client is just going to be blowing your phone up or they're going to be emailing you it's going to be crazy emails like over the top and yeah that does absolutely happen but that's not always how it happens a lot of times this particular client will just take it out in your cleaner you know they'll leave rude notes like hey clean the printer but for real this time like what that's like unnecessary <laughs> but these are the types of things that'll get your cleaners feeling disgruntled and ultimately not wanting to work there and again that will be a headache and a nightmare for you so the things you actually want to look for there is just again making sure that your cleaner is feeling good about the location and your client check in on your clients check in on your cleaners make sure that everything is working out pretty smoothly there and i don't mean just over the phone i mean actually showing up a lot of times to make sure things are smoothly whether it's you or one of your operations managers have them show up in person that way you or someone on your management staff can see if this person is in fact being disrespectful or maybe the cleaners being sensitive either which way you have to address it if you don't you are in for tons of headaches Let's get to number two. Okay, red flag number two that you have a nightmare client on your hands or the potential for one is lack of communication. That's right. Yes, on one hand, it feels good to not have to hear from your clients. But like my former mentor back in my franchise days, he was the franchisor, he owned the franchises. He told me, sat me down, he was like, Mike, a lot of times people think no news is good news. But in reality, for what we do in this industry, that's terrible news. You always have to hear from your clients. When you don't hear from your clients, you could always assume it's probably not that great. Now, am I saying just because you don't hear from your clients means they're unhappy and they, they're thinking about replacing you? No, 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 no. But it's a good level of paranoia to have that it's it's like, wait, I haven't heard from this particular client. They're not returning any emails. They're not responding. Like someone needs to go, someone needs to show up because what ends up happening when there's no communication and let's say one of your cleaners can be very good doing a really good job. They could be missing something really small and insignificant in their eyes, but in your client's eyes, this could be a huge thing, right? Let's say it's a coffee stain on a garbage can and it happens to be at their desk. You know what they're gonna be thinking? This company doesn't give any attention attention to details, look at this stain, this stain has been here. And what they don't realize is your cleaner is overseeing thousands of square feet, 
right? While they are just in their cubicle or in their private office and that's what they see all day. Now with good communication, that little stain on their coffee pail, that is a simple, simple fix. I mean, that is such a small problem. You tell the cleaners the next night they take care of it and now they know to really, really pay attention for that because that's what they're looking for. Without communication, this can snowball into something massive and we don't want to do that, okay? So when someone is not communicating with you, and I know I talk to people all the time, I was like, no, 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 Mike, I'm communicating. They're just not communicating with me. And I say, okay, then you have to escalate things. Show up in person, make your presence known, be very friendly, just communicate, just walk in, speak to whoever your contact is, ask how everything's going, ask what can be improved, let them know you're happy to help. Do these things, they'll go a long way to make sure you don't have someone who is a so-so client and become a nightmare client. Now, let's get to the last big one. You're not gonna wanna miss this one. But quickly, before we do, if you're finding value from this video and you don't want these nightmare clients, hit me with that thumbs up. And if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. Now, let's get to number three. Okay, red flag number three. Like I said, this one is a doozy. This one, I'm sure, if I've owned a cleaning business for more than a few months, you have experienced this at least once, especially if you are doing residential and you're thinking about making the jump to commercial. For my residential people out there, I feel your pain because my understanding is it happens a lot there, okay? But it can also happen sometimes in commercial. It's not that common, but it does happen. So I want you to understand it so it doesn't happen to you. And that is never ending adding. Never ending adding? <laughs> yeah, no, they are constantly adding things on top of what you agreed upon in the contract. This causes tension. And I know a lot of cleaning company owners out there are a little timid when it's like, you know, cause on one hand, let's say someone's like, Hey, I'm sorry, we didn't add it to the contract, but could you make sure your team clean the microwave once a week? That would really help me out. See for me, no problem. Something like that. I'm not even going to add, I'm not going to add anything to the contract. I'm not going to rework numbers. I'm not going to send them an invoice for $45 for cleaning the microwave. Something like that, I'm thinking about long-term great happiness in our working relationship. I'm gonna look the other way on something like that, right? And that does end up happening. And a lot of times it's very innocent. It's this client was like, oh my goodness, I can't believe Rudy didn't tell you that the microwave needs to be clean. Hey, not a big deal. That's a 10 to 15 minute task. It, it's just, again, it's just if that, it's not that serious, right? So, that's not a problem. What ends up becoming a problem when it's like, oh, did you guys do the microwave? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Also, do you know the back elevator? I noticed that hasn't been cleaned. And you say, oh, that wasn't actually a part of it. And they're like, oh, just come on, help us out. Could you do the back elevator? And you're like, okay, fine. And then they're like, by the way, did you get rid of that construction garbage, you know, in the downstairs? And you're like, well, that's, you know, we don't remove construction garbage. Like, oh, come on, can, can you just take care of that? And so on and so on. And now, as you could possibly imagine, let's say you've allotted three hours per night per cleaning in that location. That three hours was just focused on what they said they wanted. Now, if they add another 45 minutes worth of cleaning, it's not always gonna be that extreme, but it could be an extra 20 or 30 minutes, but that adds up. That adds up over the course of a week, several weeks, and of course, a month. I mean, you're adding hours and hours of hours of cleaning, which is making your profit margin go from nice to not nice. That is something that you need to address. You need to set a strong boundary and there's nothing wrong with, like I said, looking the other way on something small. You have to think about it in terms of time. If it's just an extra 10 minutes, it's not a big deal. But if they're adding like an extra hour at work, you have to set a hard boundary there. Let them know that's absolutely fine. I can do that. But again, right now we're adding like another 40 minutes to my cleaners night. So what I'm gonna do is tonight, I'm gonna go home, just put the numbers together, just to kind of show you what it would look like going forward if you kept this in the contract. If they're like, oh no, are you that type of company? Don't worry. Don't let them guilt you into that. That is just not how the world operates. You cannot do that. That is unreasonable. And you don't wanna work with anyone who's unreasonable. I hope this video was massively valuable to you. If you did find it valuable, then you are going to find this super valuable. Go check it out now. Peace.